world. In, in my opinion, at least, uh, the best way of convincing somebody begins with understanding what type of person you're dealing with. Um, as we discussed yesterday, there are some people, it, it, same thing as in sales as well as, you know, in any sort of um, situation where you're trying to change somebody or influence somebody, um, people are either going to buy what you say regardless of what you do, there are people who are not going to buy what you say, I mean, regardless of the argument that you give them, and then there are the people in the middle. Um, different approaches are needed. I mean, you need people like Dawkins or Hitchens, um, the more incendiary um, skeptics to kind of, you know, rally the base and, and vocalize those people um, because they support people like the NCSC in a lot of situations. Um, I'm not certain of your funding, but, I mean, I imagine that it certainly helps. Um, but that's not really good for people who are sitting on the fence. Um, I think that you need to take a more um, kid gloves and rational and calm approach to that. You know, it, it's, it's like we were discussing earlier about what it takes to win a debate, and a lot of times the person with the, the most correct information does not necessarily win it. It's how you present it, how you come off, and if you're likable by the people that you're trying to speak with. And when you come off as too harsh, you actually, it's self-defeating. Um, so I think that the big thing to do is, is just kind of figure out who you're dealing with and what um, method is best to go against them. You know, try not to come off as too abrasive. And trust. Be people are yeah. not going to change their views unless they, they, they trust you and have some sort of respect for you. You generally don't generally generate that feeling of trust and respect by kicking people in the shins. Exactly. And when you, when you start a discussion and you uh, actually suppose, put the person on the defensive, should... they're going to be less likely to listen to you strictly because they're they're attracted away from you. They're so focused on defending themselves that they're not interested in embracing your position. As soon as you attack them, you immediately cut off that possibility. So you have to keep in mind what is your goal. If your goal is to um, persuade somebody toward your point of view, then do what you need to do to reach that goal. Uh, it may require suppressing your ego, which some people have trouble doing. <laughs> but. You know, build, building a sense of trust and building a sense of uh, respect for uh, the people who disagree with you um, is necessary if you're going to persuade them. And to, for my mind, if I want to achieve my goals, I need to persuade people. I cannot force people to hold my views. I, I live in a democracy, so I have to persuade them. And also realize when you have no chance. I was going to pick up, oh, sorry, going to pick up with you. Uh, if I may, Eugenie, because um, if you can't use evidence to support your case, what are you left with? And if people are not going to accept evidence, then how can you persuade them? Well, why would you not use evidence? Uh, I don't think anybody here believes no, that I'm, evidence I'm, is no, no, relevant. I'm, I'm, I'm totally sorry if, if you misunderstood uh, what I was saying. I would use evidence to persuade someone, but if someone Correct. is reluctant to accept evidence, how can I persuade them? You can persuade them with evidence if you have established some sort of relationship with that person, a relationship based mm -hmm. upon trust and respect. Um, if you have not established that relationship, all of the evidence on the planet is not going to persuade that person towards your point of view. Uh, and this is why, for example, when uh, pe teachers who have uh, conservative Christian students in their classes and they're kind of, you know, beating them, beating their heads against the wall, trying to get this kid to understand and accept the science, what do I do, what do I do? I encourage them to direct that student toward one of the websites that is run by other conservative Christians, but ones who do accept the science. Because those people will automatically have credibility with that student, whereas somebody, a non-believer like me, certainly is not going to have credibility with that student, for, uh, regardless of the quality of my evidence. The evidence, the science, is necessary but not sufficient. If you're going to persuade people whose views are different from you, you have to establish a relationship with them first, before the evidence is going to be listened to. you got to get the fingers out of the ears. And there's a number of ways that, uh, that one can I understand that. that but what, what, what I also hear in that is that um, 
the videos that, for example, uh, Potholer makes, um, which are very factual. Uh, they are always well referenced. Um, are you saying that he is effectively wasting his time by doing these videos? I, I, I can't believe that. I, I would have thought that he's having some effect. I certainly hope he is. And, and that's, a, I, I think, a purely evidence. Would you agree, Paolo? Your videos are yeah. purely evidence based. I, I, I know that they are effect? having an effect. I, I do get um, lots of messages from people who say either that they've been, um, they've suddenly realized, they, they've learned. First of all, I think people have learned how to question things better by watching my videos because one thing I've always been telling people to do, they come to me and they say, I don't understand how to counter these arguments. And the, the one thing I've really got through, I think, is to get people to check sources. If someone comes up with a piece of information, the first thing I say to them is, find out what the source is. Ask this person, what's the source of your information? And if they say, well, I heard it from the local butcher, uh, or, you know, well, I read it on some blog, then, you know, you can start, you can start to say, well, it's not a credible source uh, of, of information anyway. Uh, but I think people, once they, they learn where information comes from, then they can see whether it's factually accurate or not. Um, so I have had people who say, yeah, they, they have been uh, certainly taught uh, from, I hate to say taught, I, I'm not a teacher by any means, but they've, they've learned to, to uh, find out more about information and they've been persuaded to certain points of view that back the scientific case. So I know it is having an effect. But you do get the people, as Eugenie says, the people who will not be persuaded, and as you say, DPR, you know, people who won't be persuaded by the evidence. And I have a, an answer to that. I never argue with them. There are people who have just made up their minds about something and they simply refuse to change their minds. Whatever evidence you present to them, it's not going to do any good. The way that I get around this is two things, and I learned this as a journalist. First is, I present myself as somebody very stupid, which is not difficult because, look, I was never the brightest kid at school. Uh, and that's the honest truth. I, I always say I came bottom of the class. People don't believe it. It's absolutely true. Um, the if, if you try and assert yourself on top of somebody and, and show yourself to be smarter, you're just going to get into an ego fight, which is no good. You Just give the person respect and say, look, I assume that you know more about this than I do. Don't try and argue a case. Just ask them questions. And, and I've, uh, argue, answering, asking questions is never going to antagonize anybody. You just say, you clearly know a lot about this. Please tell me why this, this, and the other. And eventually you start asking questions that they cannot answer because they've already given an answer which now ties themselves in knots and, and they get a contradiction. And they begin to see, well, hang on a minute, I can't answer that one. Now, it may not change their minds, but at least it gives them that element of self-doubt that they suddenly realize, well, there may be things that I don't know the answer to. So I find questioning people is, is a, a lot easier. It saves you from having an argument. It saves you from getting into a kind of a, a mud fight over things, and it does get people to start questioning their own beliefs. I don't know if you've had the same experience. John. Oh, yes, very um, much so. If I, yeah, if I can hop in real quick, actually, what, what Pat Holler just said, that's a great um, insight. It, it's very, um, you know, how to win friends and influence people in the sense of if, if you want to increase acceptance of an idea, one wonderful way to do that is to kind of lead people along let them connect the dots that you're planting in front of them and let them think it was their own idea because they're much more likely to accept an idea that they've construed in their own mind or at least that they believe that they have than if you try and shove it down their throat. Um, you also asked, is Potholer wasting his time trying to convince some people? Um, yeah, absolutely. Some people he is wasting his time on. On many of them, he's not. The distinction is what motivates these people. Um, in my experience, people have different beliefs for different reasons, um, and oftentimes they're not valid. Um, and, and I don't mean to lump creationists in with Holocaust deniers, I'm only using it as an example, I mean no connection there in terms of severity, but people don't always believe things based on evidence. I mean, we, we have footage, we have names, we have bodies, we have physical sites. What more? If people only base their beliefs on evidence, reason, and logic, what more could you possibly need to convince somebody? There wouldn't be any Holocaust deniers if they based if people based their beliefs only on reason and logic. So there has to be something else there, something that's missing. Um, no, that's just my thought. 
Yeah, actually, yeah no, there, I agree. I agree completely. Actually, there's a lovely parallel to that. Um, Kurt Wise, who is one of the more interesting of the young earth creationists, has said uh, very bluntly, publicly, and in print that if all you had to go on was the geological and uh, fossil and scientific evidence, you would have to conclude that the earth was ancient and that evolution occurred. But he is a f He's got a PhD from Harvard, by the way, um, and he's uh, he remains a young earth creationist because that is his interpretation of the Bible. So that's a classic example of somebody for whom the evidence is never going to be adequate to change the ideas because there's an initial barrier that stands in the way. I suspect a lot of the people who watch Potholder's videos on climate change are open to his arguments because they just simply don't know very much about it and he has persuasive informative videos that are easy to understand and so that helps them to, to grasp the science. But they don't come in with the barrier to listening to the evidence from the get-go. And this is the problem with a lot of creationists when they um, uh, are faced with evidence for evolution. It's also the case with uh, a number of libertarian and uh, politically conservative individuals when they encounter the climate change issue. And uh, even good solid information like you can find in Ben Potholer and, and um, Green Man and some of the other uh, uh, YouTube sources um, is not going to be persuasive because they kind of dug in their heels ideologically and have a um, uh, have those fingers in the ears. Yeah, I, I think also the people that visit my channel uh, since the series on climate change started and and also the one on on creationism they tend to already be um, in the camp of the scientific ideas anyway. I, th I think I have a very intelligent bunch. We've got over 70,000 subscribers now and I think most of them do at least understand the basics of science. Um, I'm actually rather disappointed. I, I get so many thumbs up because if you, if you look at the videos, you know, it's like the, the ratio of thumbs up to thumbs down is something like, I don't know, 30 to 1. And that dismays me because it makes me think, okay, the people who are absolutely wedded to the idea that climate change is a hoax or that, that you know, God made the earth in seven days, they're not coming to the channel. Um, and I would much rather have a balance and yet you see other channels which are creationist channels or channels about uh, uh, global warming being a hoax and they get the opposite. They get 20 to 1, they get thumb, thumbed up. Um, and it shows to me that there's a polarization. People are only looking at the channels that reflect their views. They're only reading those blogs that reflect their views. And they're simply refusing to look at anything else. Um, I actually would much rather look at a video that, that was in opposition to my views. I'd like to, to challenge my views. I don't think most people do that, unfortunately. They're, they're much more comfortable just hearing the echo of their own voice. And I think that's why we're not we're not actually uh, getting um, a lot of changes of mind. I think people are just not tuning in to, to different points of view. I think that's very well, true, but I don't think it's quite as, I don't think the situation is quite as, as, as grim as you think it is. Um, and that's because I really do believe that the most effective communication is one-on-one. -on -one. And mm -hmm. what you're doing with your videos and what I do in my public lectures and, and other people do is actually helping the people on our side to better present the positive views for our for our position yeah. on evolution and climate. You know, the people say, well, you're just preaching to the choir and I've got a little smart alecky response to that. I, I remind them that the choir needs ammo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually that's yeah. very true, Eugene. I, I, I have thought the same thing. I think you know, people who haven't been able to argue the case do actually message me and say, thanks for doing this because now I can go to my brother or my uncle and, yes. and tell him why he's full of, yeah. full of SHIT. Or let, well, let's hope that people he will know something's wrong but they won't know what or why. So, sorry, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And hopefully you'll go to your brother or your uncle or the person who's standing behind you in the uh, supermarket line and provide 
provide the science um, uh, in, an, in an accurate and, and understandable fashion, which you have modeled with your videos, and, and that, that, that's, a hugely, that's a hugely positive thing. So, you know, don't, don't feel that just because you're getting all those thumbs up that little is being accomplished. It's, um, it's hard to quantify the kinds of things I'm talking about, but, but by the way, there was a very good article in a recent um, New Yorker. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly the issue, but within the last couple of weeks um, by Atul Gawande, and he's actually talking about the um, acceptance of medical procedures and why is it that some ideas are accepted really uh, quickly and others take a long time. And, and basically his takeaway is that the best way to get changes in medical procedures, if you want to have medical personnel, the doctors and nurses, to change the way they do things is one-on-one. -on -one. Just mm -hmm. presenting them with the, um, with the scientific evidence that, um, uh, you know, uh, aseptic conditions uh, 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 result in less spread of disease or that um, anesthesia is a good thing for surgery um, or that um, uh, Holding a baby close to the mother's body uh, helps to prevent the or helps to stabilize the newborn's temperature, etc. These kinds of things are best communicated if you have individual kind of of transmission of these ideas. And it's I keep keep coming back to this. It's based upon a sense of trust of the person who's transmitting the information. I mean, a, a good a good summary is that the science is necessary but not sufficient. But it is necessary, yeah. and thank goodness we do have yeah. the best science on our side. And if that I can gives hop us a in big here, advantage. I mean, it's, if I can hop in, I mean, one big thing about people in general, I'm talking about the general population, um, which by and large doesn't really have scientific training. They don't trust the evidence. They trust the person who's conveying it to them. Um, mm. And for a lot of people, it doesn't matter what you say. It matters whether or not they like you. Because you could be saying something that's completely factually correct. Um, or I'm sorry, let me phrase this another way. There can be somebody who they cannot stand that is presenting the information very clearly, concisely, it's all factually correct, and they'll dismiss it because they dislike the person. Meanwhile, you've got another person, like a, like a Ted Haggard or a... Um, Anyways, it, you know, who's just lying through his teeth. Everything he says is factually incorrect, but nine times out of ten, that person is going to go with them. Um, mm. You know, like Kent Hovind is considered a great debater by the uneducated person who watches him. Um, and so you really have to kind of keep that in mind whenever you're approaching these people. Um, you know, the, the general population, their mind is oftentimes not like that of someone who's trained in science, so you have to keep that in mind. We trust the evidence over the people, Generally speaking, people trust people over the evidence, so that's something to keep in mind. Well, don't don't be too sure of that because there's some survey research showing that uh, educated people respond the same way as less educated people when it comes to those kinds of issues. Um, if oh, that you, makes me feel worse. Yeah. Yeah, worse. I, I know. I'm not. I'm not helping, am I? But there there have been there have been there there was a great study where they they took identical um, newspaper articles about the current events, you know, the, uh, the war in Iraq or whatever it was, and uh, told uh, liberals that, that the article was written by liberal, uh, told conservatives no. that the article was written by a conservative, told other liberals that the article was written by a conservative, et cetera, et cetera. They had a four by four table there, or two by four table. Hmm. And basically, if, if you are a liberal and thought the article was written by a liberal, you thought it was a good article. If you're a liberal and you thought the article was written by a conservative, you thought it was a crappy article. <laughs> you know, sorry. <laughs> it, it works. Can't we all just get along? Yeah. <laughs> speaking, speaking of getting along.